Hi there, come right on in. This is Home Keepers. So glad to be here today, so glad you're there. And I'm wondering, have you ever seen this program before? If not, you're so welcome. Come right on in. Uh, we talk an awful lot about the home here, thinking it is so important. So important to individuals, it's important to our society, it's important to the nation. So that's why we have a program called Home Keepers and we want to encourage you uh, and inform you to know how really important it is. And I have a great guest today. Her name is Mary Rock. I like that. And she's written a book, Cancer, How I Beat It on a Shoestring Budget, and says you don't have to be cancer's next victim. This deals with a lot of natural remedies, and Mary has uh, really done a lot of research. It's quite impressive, uh, the amount of work she's done on this book, and she'll tell you her story. And this is in no way to uh, suggest we're offering medical advice, but <clears throat> she's here to tell her story. And I'm going to join uh, Stephanie. We're going to make Parmesan cauliflower bites. That sounds so good. I've mentioned to you before, I'd probably put Parmesan cheese on ice cream. It's just one of my favorites. But before I join her, I want to uh, show you one of the greatest treasures of my life. This was my dad's Bible, and it is literally falling apart. The first date in it is 1930, and it's full of uh, things that he has pasted in it and treasures of all kinds. And I found a real treasure in here that I want to share with you at the end of the program. And uh, we have printed it up so that uh, we can send it to you. So after I tell you all about it, I think you'll want it. So be sure and um, hang around till the very end. I'm going to talk about this precious, precious Bible. And I'm getting ready to give it to my son. And I don't know a greater gift, but he's a wonderful pastor and he will treasure it like I do. Okay, I'm going to join Stephanie over there. This Bible is falling apart, literally, everywhere. Uh, the address is on your screen. I hope you'll take note of that. And going to see what she's up to here. Uh, <laughs> looks like you're already working. I am already working. <laughs> and we have put together uh, a recipe of very interesting items. Yes, we have panko crumbs, mm -hmm. we have um, grated Parmesan cheese, and I have Creole seasoning, mm -hmm. which we have discovered. Yes, which Arthelene just taste it fried. if you don't like things with a kick. And uh, the audience know that I can't take anything hot. Well, and I thought Creole we would learned be our lesson, a little it? bit innocent, but <coughs> it's not, I just She's get over suffering. here. And <laughs> Uh, let's let's do it. Okay, so let me. Um, I'm what I'm going to do. I have little cauliflower bites. Okay. Yeah, you keep going. Okay, I'm, I'm going to get some fine. water. That's fine. Ta Go. Talk to the I'm going to dip them in flour, <coughs> and then I'm going to dip Thank them you. in some egg that has been beaten, and then I'm going to dip them in the mixture of panko crumbs, Creole seasoning, which is dangerous. Creole seasoning, which I can't and, take. Yeah. And I have to tell you something. I'm going to put these in the fryer, and then mm -hmm. I have to share something. With oh, okay. You. Okay. So I just have hot oil, hot vegetable oil here. And these really, they only take a couple of minutes. So you like hot stuff, I right? do like things with a kick. Every, I think my whole family like it, but not. I can't take it. Every day for like the fat, last month, I've had hot and sour soup from the Chinese restaurant. And then I sit mm. there, and I just sweat. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's lovely. Is that... Um, that soup, that it. soup is, so I've never yeah. tried that. So anyway, so I'm going to let these cook, but um, somebody had mentioned on my fan book page that they liked my hair from yesterday's show, so uh -huh. I had to look back and see what show it was, and it was from 2013, and I was so quiet, and I was so mild-mannered, and I'm not sure what happened. You have... <laughs> Blossomed. I have come out of my shell because I was talking so quietly uh, and I was so timid and now I'm just so loud and obnoxious. It's if crazy. anybody in this <laughs> room remembers her when she was real quiet, yeah. raise your hand. No, there Brooke, are no Brooke hands. wasn't here. Brooke wasn't here. Matthew has seen me quiet mm -hmm. a long time ago at church. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah, while well, church was going on, you yeah. weren't talking. Okay, so we're just... That's all you do. Yeah, I mean, it's like two, not even two minutes on each side. Oh, how cute. Yeah, these would be I wonderful mean, hors d'oeuvres now. I would do these in heartbeat, but I wouldn't, I would not put the Creole in it. I think you're going to like it once it, it, 
Uh, I wouldn't dare. You don't want to try it? No. You're you, not going to try, try it, really? You try it. It looks like a chicken nugget. Mmm. Is it good? I'm telling you, the Creole season. Well, most people like it. I, I mean, I'm, it's I'm the oddball. It's not even a kick. Mm -hmm. It's not even kicking me. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm not going to try. Maybe after mm. the show, I'll try it. But those are delicious. Really? Yes. Really. And 99% of the people all the world would love it. Mm. My family, they they love hot stuff. And how easy are those to make? Well, I'm glad to know that. Yes. And they're not. I mean, because I would do it with just the parmesan and the panko. I I love panko. Maybe some garlic salt. Why Why would anybody use any other kind of crumbs except? Panko. Right, especially they on this. They really on this. adhere good. That's all you do? That's all you do. And you just keep dipping? Uh -huh. keep what, dipping. what a great idea for hors d'oeuvres, yeah. friends. You want to just try a little tiny bite? No, I'm not going to okay. do that because I got all <laughs> choked up and I started crying. <laughs> she did. We had to stop. I wonder how many times the viewers have heard me say, I can't take anything hot. We proved it today, didn't we? We really did. And I wish we would have just kept rolling because mm. you would have thoroughly enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Anyway, if you would like this recipe, and uh, I am going to try this and uh, just leave it's the hot really, stuff really, out. It's really, really, really good. Uh, email us or write to me. There's absolutely no uh, cost involved. Mm. We'll be glad to get it. You're going to eat them all. I'm glad you like them. That is so good. Okay, say with me. I want you to meet my guest, Mary Rock. She rocks. Yes. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. All right. <clears throat> I'm uh, glad to introduce to you Mary Rock. I love that name. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the author of Cancer and How I Beat It on a Shoestring. You are a licensed minister, a strong woman of faith, believing in the power of God and healing and miracles. And That's me right. Too. Me too. And <clears throat> just give me a, a little bit of your background and your testimony. How did you come to the Lord? Um, well, uh, I've been a Christian for 30 plus years. Mm -hmm. And uh, my parents gave their heart to the, uh, to the Lord and invited me to church. And the first time, now I had grown up in a religion, but not knowing about Jesus, mm -hmm. really. And the first time I heard the gospel, mm -hmm. I was drawn to the altar. <clears throat> that is a testimony. I never get tired of hearing uh, the, the transformation the power of God, and you can't explain it. Right. It's just real. And I was truly transformed. Uh -huh. um, now, you have had experience with situations in your body that uh, manifested like cancer. Not absolutely sure. Were you always interested in health and natural things? natural products? Yes, I was. Um, the very first book that I remember reading was Jethro Kloss's Back to Eden. Oh, and I'm I was familiar just, with I that. I was a child, mm -hmm. and I was, uh, you know, a reader, and I was very interested in what he had to say. Um, and you talk about things, a lot of them are already in our ho house. Uh, Correct. That are helpful, but also you talk about things that are hurtful. That are in our house. Exactly. And <clears throat> there, there are. I think you'd mentioned four different things that that you like to really kind of help educate people about. And this, this I think is a very educational book uh, because uh, it mentions things that can help and things that we're all we ingest in many ways and and don't exactly. know where, where harm, that they're harmful. Exactly. And I don't claim in the book that I. Uh, I am writing and telling you how to cure it, mm -hmm. but I can tell you how to stop it, mm -hmm. how to reduce it down to almost nothing, mm -hmm. and what to do to extend your life. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the four things that you'd like to kind of highlight? 
Uh, the primary toxin, well, what I tell in my book is that cancer is toxins and germs causes cancer. Mm -hmm. And the number one toxin is chlorine. Chlorine breaks down the immune system and it causes estrogen dominance. Well, um, now I think St. Petersburg just had a big deal about, they put it in our water, don't they? Correct. Um, and I think it was taken out of while and then they voted to put it back in or something. Well, it's one of those things that you would call maybe a necessary evil. Mm -hmm. uh, chlorine kills germs. I mean, you wouldn't want to go to a public pool without it mm -hmm. having a proper amount of mm -hmm. chlorine. But um, once the chlorine, the chlorinated water arrives to your home, that's where you need to do something about it. And uh, that's one of the things that I talk about. I talk about um, the chlorine filter. And after I finished the book, I learned about a um, vita, uh, vitamin C shower filter that actually neutralizes the chlorine and the chloramines. That comes into your home. That, exactly. How does that work? Do you put it on the... It's very easily installed. It's like under three minutes. I did it, and I didn't even read the directions. So it was very easy to Where install. Where do you get them? Um, I actually have them available on my website, mm -hmm. MaryRockMinistries.com. Yeah, let's put her website up, and we'll, we will just uh, leave it up. Um, but chlorine, chlorine is, you know, um, uh, skin cancer is the number one cancer that people are diagnosed with. And um, you're, you need to stop washing in chlorine, number one. Mm -hmm. And then um, lung cancer is the number two cancer. And the vapors from the chlorine, the shower, the chlorine in your shower, actually enter into your lungs. I, I learned this and I talked about you this. You have the references and all in yes. the book. Yes, they enter into your lungs and they settle in the air pockets and make little sores mm -hmm. and set you up for disease. Um, your mother passed away, yes. right, with ovarian cancer. Correct. Uh, was this way before you had an, any interest in studying as you have for this book? Oh, absolutely. And I can tell you that I wrote a book that I wish I would have had when my mother was ill. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you talked about chlorine. There were some other things that, that you think alcohol. are... Because there's tons of information in this book. Uh, but there's four things you think are really Yeah, important. you know... I do have a lot of information in the book, mm -hmm. but it isn't complicated. Mm -hmm. A lot of the information that I gleaned was from books that were so complicated, the average person wouldn't even be able to pick them up and mm -hmm. make head or tails of them mm -hmm. to get well. But what I did is I simplified um, information written by scientists and doctors. Mm -hmm. And yes, the next, uh, what I was telling you is, um, about the toxins, the two main toxins that you want to stay away from, as I said, chlorine, and number two, isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol applied to the skin causes um, cancer to spread very rapidly. We all use it. Absolutely, and we use many, many products that have isopropyl alcohol. And um, once a person um, you know, is set up and their immune system is reduced from all the chlorine and everything, um, and the estrogen dominance that takes place so that people develop hormonal cancers, mm -hmm. um, then the uh, isopropyl alcohol becomes particularly dangerous. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we've covered a couple of them. Yeah, uh, I wanted to mention that isopropyl alcohol, perfume, I talk about a gentleman in my book that I had... I put perfume on every day. Yeah. Well, wear essential oils. Oh, okay. There's, there's natural... Uh, Pacifica makes a nice natural uh, perfume, a uh, whole selection of them. But just a little spray, does that hurt if you? If you get it on your skin, yes. Yeah, yeah, it does. It, it opens the door. Well, uh, I suppose that would alcohol. be in a lot of things. It is. It's in uh, perfume, as I said. It's in a lot of processed foods because it's an approved cleaner for manufacturing equipment. And, um, you know, it's in liniments and hairspray and mouthwash. We're surrounded mouthwash. with it for sure. Exactly. Yeah. And also 
um, a lot of um, beauty treatments like the makeups or the cleansers or those whole line of of uh, beauty products that promise to keep you young forever. <laughs> they all have a foundation of isopropyl alcohol and um, once you get breast cancer, if you keep using those beauty treatments, you mm -hmm. will not get well. Mm -hmm. And uh, also hand sanitizers. Hand sanitizers. Uh, they, they have alcohol in them. They do have ethyl alcohol, which is a wonderful substitute. And um, But they have a um, trace amount often of isopropyl alcohol, so you really have to watch out for what you put on your skin. What I do is I use ethyl alcohol. I purchase it. Um, so, but where did this information come from because uh, of the alcohol, because it's so widely used? It's, exactly. It's uh, that information came from a lady uh, named Dr. Hulda Clark, and she wrote a book, uh, Cancer, um, Preventing Cancer. You Mainly can find, Yeah, she's Hulda about Clark. Alcohol. Yeah, you can go on the internet and find out information that she's written. Mm -hmm. But her books are uh, very detailed and almost you could consider them complicated and I gleaned a lot of her information. Uh -huh. Has she um, has she written on things be besides the alcohol? Oh yeah she um, well you know that was where I understood about the uh -huh. the um, how lethal chlorine and alcohol. Um, she, and did she have any research or scientific? Absolutely uh -huh. she was a scientist. Okay. Absolutely. All right, that's three. Have we covered three of them? Well, yeah. I yeah. wanted to talk about estrogenic foods. Um, I just talked to someone recently, and they told me they were battling um, stage two breast cancer, and they couldn't understand why they were making any progress. And I mentioned to them after you know back and forth that it, because I began to suspect that they weren't eating properly, I said, you know. Um, fast foods are just laden with estrogen. And she said, oh my goodness. <laughs> that was <laughs> her know. diet, right? Exactly, exactly. But um, you want to, if you do have a hormonal cancer, such as breast cancer or ovarian cancer, you want to eat uh, organic chicken, grass-fed beef, mm -hmm. and um, actually Publix. Uh, Publix milk is organic. You want to steer away from the ultra-pasteurized organic mm -hmm. milk. I, I don't know if you read that part in my book, but I told you. Mm -hmm. I said how dangerous ultra-pasteurized organic milk is. And you know, for, for decades, when a woman would begin go through menopause, um, they would g give you estrogen pills. And <clears throat> I look back and see maybe the Lord protected me because I had a doctor that really was pushing that. And I, I just wouldn't, I just wouldn't do it. I came to the conclusion that, okay, if if God designed your body to go through certain stages, which you go through your youth, your puberty, and you know your childbearing years, and then menopause, and and if he, why why are you trying to prolong this season with with some pills? And I didn't take it. And I believe maybe you can uh, shed some light on this. I believe that since then they have discovered that that was really not a good idea and gave it to millions and millions and millions of women. That's correct. That's correct. I remember re, uh, I watched a documentary entitled Our Daily Poison and they interviewed a, <laughs> I know, it's a Canadian documentary and uh, a French scientist said that if you supplement with estrogen, you will develop cancer. Uh, but you know, hormone replacement therapy, mm -hmm. um, even the natural, you're giving yourself too much estrogen. Um, and you know, it is, in my opinion, very dangerous. I was using it uh, to try to uh, get rid of some terrible hot flashes and, and yeah. insomnia. That was the reason for it. Right, I was desperate. Mm -hmm. And uh, later, I don't, I don't even think that I had, you know, realized this when I'd written the book, I learned about three things, I think it's about three things that you can do to really cut back on hot flashes. And I really want to talk about that because, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's how it gets, we get in trouble in the first place. Uh -huh. But um, staying well hydrated, if you get, uh, if you're having hot flashes, you're actually not drinking enough water. Uh -huh. And if you'll exercise, if you'll take a walk around the block in the morning and a walk around the block 
in the afternoon, it will really help diminish the hot flashes. Neither does cost you a dime. <laughs> exactly, and eliminate coffee. Oh, really? Coffee causes some terrible issues in a woman's life. And a, a woman in menopause and even postmenopausal mm -hmm. woman should not drink coffee. If you just tuned in, I'm talking to Mary Rock, a book she just wrote, Cancer, How I Beat It on a Shoestring Budget, and the things she deals with, a lot of them might even be in your kitchen. Exactly. Or you, or you could go find them at the health food store. It's not a medical book. She doesn't profess in any way to uh, uh, be in that field, but uh, she's done a whole lot of what I call the grunt work that the rest of us can read about. and. Uh, you talk a lot about cleansing and Absolutely. The, uh, the importance. And you know, the way Americans eat, you can only imagine what their insides are like with French fries and, and right. all the fast food and all. Right. Well, the more informed I became, the better my diet got too. Yeah. So it will really help them realize a lot of um, poor choices and, and, you know, the repercussions of making poor choices. The one other thing that I wanted to talk about uh, that I learned mm -hmm. from reading this doctor's book, a uh, scientist, is um, when a person has cancer, they should uh, absolutely avoid the chlorine, the isopropyl alcohol, the estrogenic foods, which soy, number one estrogen, yeah. you know, and um, uh, go on a ketogenic diet like Doug Kaufman's program. Mm -hmm. He talks about a ketogenic diet all the time and how it'll slow down cancer. And then another thing that I learned was the avoidance of the foods of foods in the allium family. And that is garlic, onion, leeks, shallots. You're kidding. No. But I those, thought garlic was good for you. Those foods are good for you, but once you get cancer, and I talk about how cancer, malignancy is a germ, once you get the germs and they get a, a stronghold in your body, mm -hmm. the um, alkylating oils in the allium family, in the garlic and the onion, the leeks, the shallots, mm -hmm. they actually All the things taste good. They feed the germ. Mm -hmm. But the good news is I talk about a very affordable um, thing, and it's what I do. Mm -hmm. um, and I talk about it in my book in chapter 22. And once you supplement with this, which is pennies a day, you can actually eat pretty much what you want to. And so what is that, um, the supplement? It's a, it's a type of a hydrogen peroxide. So it, it, so it would, yeah, I, and this book has a lot of, uh, we're about out of time, but it has a lot of information about hydrogen peroxide. Absolutely. We've and addressed to, some of that. How to but. use it and also how to be free of viruses mm -hmm. like the herpes virus, mm -hmm. the HPV, even HIV. You've really covered so much uh, work. Congratulations on all the, the hard work you did to uh, put all this together. I hope you've uh, paid attention to that website because uh, there's a lot of information on there and also it shows you how you can get the book. It's on Amazon, I'm sure. And, Absolutely. And uh, all of those places. So. Um, but they can learn some things from my oh, website. Yeah. They can, and if any of this has kind of just piqued your interest, you can uh, get a whole lot more there at the website. Um, I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. I mentioned my dad's Bible at the top of the show, and um, I want to just stay with me. I want to tell you why I brought it to the studio today. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. I brought something in to you for you today I really wanted you to see. I'm holding my dad's Bible. The first, uh, I think the first date in it is uh, 1929 or 1930, and you can see how it's just literally falling apart. It's got his notes in it, and um, this little paper was what he typed out when he married my husband and myself, uh, what he was going to say, and that's over 50 years old right there. And I found something in it that um, I have presented to you before. 
but some things are worth repeating. I happened to be the fortunate child who ended up with what I would call my dad's main Bible. Uh, the date written on the first page is 1930. My father was a wonderful daddy and pastor who called my mom and us four kids into the living room each day to read and pray. And from this Bible, he would read a few scriptures and then we knelt together to pray. I can only imagine the difference in this nation if such were the practice of most families today. One day while thumbing through this Bible, I found treasures, treasures of notes that he had pasted in and also some in his own handwriting. This one is simply titled The Bible. And although the author is unknown, it arrested my attention and I thought you would appreciate it as well. It states, this book contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy. Its precepts are binding. Its histories are true. And its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise. Believe it to be safe. And practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's charter. Here, heaven is restored, paradise opened, and the gates of hell disclosed. Christ is its grand subject, our good its design, and the glory of God its end. It should fill the memory, rule the heart, and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, and prayerfully. It is a mine of wealth, a paradise of glory, and a river of pleasure. It is given to you in life. It will be open at the judgment and remembered forever. It involves the highest responsibility, rewards the greatest labor, and condemns all, all, who trifle with its holy contents. I don't know who wrote that, but if you would like a copy of this thoughtful, thorough description of the Bible, I will be happy to send it to you at no cost. If you can enclose a financial gift, it would be most appreciated. So send your request, request to the address on the screen, which is Post Office Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And please join me next time remembering... There's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 